on, on driver's education. Um, uh, next question that we have is really about um, when we might see reopening of schools and whether or not we can expect that to happen uh, this school year or what it might look like for the summer. Um, anything that you could share on that topic would be helpful. Okay. All right. That's a really good point. And uh, no, the answer is no for this school year. That has been set and is defined. We needed to have um, certainty and specificity at a time where there was um, great uncertainty in uh, the midst of a global pandemic. So please count on distance learning continuing through uh, the remainder of the school year marked to end for students either May 8th or following that based on uh, what you choose. But I would like to address this. Um, we are doing the work we're doing in phases. Uh, the first phase was to protect and safeguard our students and their physical well-being by closing buildings and broadening our child nutrition services that could be provided. And that's why we went full throttle uh, as fast as possible to get those waivers. The second phase was to re-engage students with distance learning. And um, that is to be for the remainder of the spring semester. And also to help our seniors transition into their post-secondary pursuits. So that was the, the focus of this phase we're in right now, which is this phase two. So the next phase focuses on recovery of ground lost amid this crisis. It will include the investment of federal funds through the CARES Act as well, comprehensive and advanced planning and the, you know, in the months ahead um, with the, this investment uh, toward our planning and uh, work in the summer and into the fall is needed. So what will be required of our state to open a new school year will be a heavy lift and we are very determined uh, that uh, it is much, much harder than uh, simply closing a school semester with distance learning. So during this time marked by uncertainty, here's what I know um, more than ever, uh, the State Department of Education is going to work to put the needs of our students in place. Uh, as a top priority, but we have to be ready for different scenarios because it is so far ahead. Um, and there are variables that will impact this that right now what we can do is plan and plan based on um, various scenarios. So we're beginning that work now. We will be calling on some of you and um, seeking your input as a group. Uh, to, to help us as we are wanting to plan out some of those both policies that we will need and the practical side of uh, starting. And uh, so please look for that to come in uh, the next coming weeks as we take on this really full comprehensive planning period. All right. Great, thank you, Superintendent. Um, would you uh, be able to address, um, as we close out the school year and, and with students not expected to go back to school, um, the possibility of allowing students to clean out their lockers or clear their desk or um, get athletic gear? Um, what thoughts do you have on that? Do you think that SDE might provide some guidance on that? Mm -hmm. We will certainly be willing to provide guidance. Um, right now, of course, we know that there is um, a, a, a very clear need to continue and maintain social distancing. And um, I, would, I would just say this may be a time where it's best that districts um, examine what that might look like in terms of a, a plan. Um, there are some districts, I think, that are um, of, of a smaller size that may be able to provide, and I think a lot of our even larger districts have um, provided emergency needs that were uh, medicine, glasses, things that children must have in order to learn. Um, and they've scheduled those through a um, appointment-based drop-off pickup type um, setting. 
Um, so I, we would be happy if you need that guidance, but uh, we can provide more of that um, if that's desired. And uh, right now though, we do not wanna do anything to disrupt and hurt what we believe we are successfully flattening the curve, um, but Oklahoma has not peaked and please keep that in mind. Remember what I said, the projection of deaths were um, over 900, 926 deaths to coronavirus are expected. So please let's not do anything that uh, could in any way um, change what we believe is a better number than what was expected. Hey, uh, Superintendent, um, a question or concern just about inequities between support staff when you have certain support staff who are coming in and working for the same pay that a support staff person who may be compromised is, is staying at home and continuing to receive that pay. Would you have any comments on that scenario? Yeah, this is a time where we are looking for those who are on the front lines, just like nurses and doctors. And in fact, Time Magazine had a, um, a cover devoted to people on the front lines and school cafeteria child nutrition workers were featured with their own cover. Uh, as I understand from Jennifer Weber, who just shared that at our all staff um, Zoom this morning. And uh, this is definitely a time where we know there are going to be those who cannot serve. They're immunocompromised, um, they're at high risk, they cannot serve. That's the whole point of those who need to be at home still being taken care of. There are others who can, and there are those volunteers who will step in. I've heard from Oklahoma City who has um, shared out that by Friday they will have served half a million meals. And they even had um, those needed masks uh, made by a thousand of them for their, their volunteers and staff. So there are ways for us to do what we must do to continue the child nutrition services um, but again, we do have contracts in place and in the board's order directive, uh, it did say that this uh, board action does not remove the, the um, contract obligations. And um, this is a time I think that we really pull on those um, relationships and trust that have been built among those you lead to um, to be both gracious and to also um, create that that team. I mean, just even I understand in Shawnee, a school district of three thousand nine hundred students, they will have served one hundred thousand meals by um, days end tomorrow, and um, one hundred and twenty people I understand are working in two different shifts. Uh, that involve support staff, certified staff, all working together to get it done. So um, I, it is inequitable, um, but that is part of working in a crisis. And I have uh, spoken with some who are leading in our uh, membership organizations that represent teachers and support staff and shared the expectation as well. But uh, this is something that we do in the midst of reality and we find a way to meet the objective um, of serving our, our students in whatever capacity um, they are asked to serve. Okay, last question here, unless somebody else um, drops one into the chat here. Um, would, Superintendent, would you be able to share um, any efforts for graduation requ uh, not requirements, um, ceremonies, excuse me, graduation ceremonies that um, districts might be doing across the state um, as they're trying to honor their seniors or the possibility to have a graduation ceremony later this year. So is the question just to share some of the things I've heard? What was the question? The question was, would it be possible to have a graduation later this summer? Um, but I thought you might share some of the things that we're hearing from districts that they're doing. Oh, okay. Um, yes, uh, I have heard that some of our districts are having a virtual ceremony at the time that students are uh, expecting to have graduation. 
And I definitely think that this is something that will help them complete the year. However, and, and honor um, that, whether it's virtual or some kind of parade, uh, depending on your school and the size of, of what's possible. Um, there's also though uh, this thinking around um, setting a date in the future where some of our schools may want to have two types of events. One that is at the same time they would normally experience but with social distancing uh, provisions and in May. And the second might be at the end of summer or even I've heard someone else talk about a fall break reunion where there would be a regathering of students um, hoping that that's a time where we we have an all clear. Uh, but that may happen in the summer as well. So I definitely think that there's um, wisdom in giving kids something to uh, cling to that they will reunite again and be able to say goodbye and and see their friends physically together and have that organized by the school. Um, so that again is something that as I was talking with one superintendent uh, yesterday, he told me that as they plan for this, they decided to plan for two because they were afraid in, in some ways if they waited to have uh, this in let's say July and then guidance comes back that restricts gatherings and it turns out to be a virtual uh, ceremony in July, then it feels even less likely that students will attend and less special. Um, why not have it virtual then in May and have the other as an opportunity if we're able to gather physically. I hope that helps. Uh, I've been just amazed at the creativity. Uh, I know your students feel special because I know you care and are planning and working on this, um, but it is uh, something we're interested in hearing what you're choosing to do and uh, happy to share that with others. Um, anything I think, I think we're good, Superintendent. Are you sure? Okay. All right, well, um, I'm, I'm gonna just let you be the one who is um, reading those and, um, and knows what we've, what we've covered in, in other areas. Um, if you have another question, please feel free to put that in and uh, we'll be happy to answer. But also you are welcome to email any additional questions where we need to provide guidance. Carolyn, do you want to add, or Brad, or Phil, um, any other areas where we do already plan to make updates to the next FAQs? Uh, sure, I can, I can give a couple of other areas. Um, we've had a, a handful of questions on general fund balance penalty waivers, and so we will address that in the next FAQ. Uh, also, um, we will be adding um, additional information um, regarding the CARES Act. Uh, as we learn more about what the requirements will be, uh, we will be adding uh, that as well. So those, I think, are the main topics that we are working on right now, uh, but there may be others that, um, that are added. All right, very good. And I appreciate that. Anything else uh, that anyone else can uh, well, actually, I know Brad is not on. He's, he is at another um, important uh, Zoom. And then I think there may be um, um, others that uh, stand by if there are other questions. But um, unless we see anything added here, uh, and if you wrote something that hasn't been answered, we'll be happy to get that for you. Uh, it looks like some of you are getting your questions answered directly by different panelists. So I appreciate uh, the panelists for doing that. Yes. All right. I think we've um, either addressed the questions in the chat or addressed them live. So I think at this time we're good to go. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm grateful for your leadership and work and appreciate you all. Uh, let's just keep doing what you're doing. It's working and we are hearing really good things from your teachers as well uh, on various calls with different disciplines in curriculum and instruction and also with school support. So I appreciate your leadership. Thank you so much. Take care and stay safe.